My name is Sharon P. Carson. I copyrighted the book titled Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man in 2004. And celebrity Steve Harvey published a book with the same title in 2009. When I learned that Steve Harvey was publishing a book with the same title and the same theme, I considered it unfair competition. And I knew that it would be very hard for me to continue to promote my book in the shadow of such a high profile personality with radio and TV access for book promotion that I did not have. But because I am confident that the messages in my book are profound, helpful to women, and divinely inspired, I will forever continue to promote it at every opportunity, even in the shadow of Goliath. I knew that God had given me not only a unique title, but a unique message for a universal problem that impacts far too many women whose hearts are being broken over and over again like eggs for an omelet. Women more often than not tend to carry emotional scars from failed relationships for long periods of time, and some women carry them for the rest of their lives. What are these scars? Anger, bitterness, distrust of men, vindictiveness, and an inability to forgive. The internalization of these negative emotions will undoubtedly have a negative impact on a woman's attitude, personality, health, happiness, and most certainly her future relationships. You see, it is one thing for someone to find a unique title, like act like a lady, think like a man, and try to fit it with a message. And it is another thing for someone to have a message and then write a book and give it a title. You see, I understand the title, act like a lady, think like a man, because it originated through me. Both the title and the messages within the book were channeled through my heart and not through my head. I write in the book that it is time for women to practice self-love and tough love in relationships. They have to realize that they bring a lot to the table, no pun intended, but many women have lost sight of this and have unconsciously minimized their value, and men have become conscious of this and are maximizing their opportunities. The book most certainly does not have all the answers to relationship problems, but I think that after reading it, you will find that it has some very good ones. You see, before Steve wrote, we, meaning men, have to feel like somebody's got our back, like we're the king, even if we're not, I wrote the golden rule of relationships. The golden rule of relationships is this. If you place your own value in a relationship below that of a man, you will never be able to up the price. Before Steve wrote, when she's in love with you, she's loyal to you. She can't see herself with someone else because for her, no one else will do. That's a woman's love. I wrote, if you lived in Canada, you probably would have met and married a Canadian. In Texas, a Texan. In Chicago, a Chicagoan. In Australia, an Australian. In Brazil, a Brazilian. In Africa, an African. And so on. In other words, throughout this world, you have many possibilities for a mate. You are simply more likely to meet one within your immediate community or social circles. Once you free yourself from thinking that there is only one man in the world for you, you will be free from the fear that he will leave you and that you will never find anyone to replace him. And before Steve wrote this about a successful woman, if you've got your own money, your own car, your own house, a Brinks alarm system, a pistol, and a guard dog, and you're practically shouting from the rooftop that you don't need a man to provide for you or to protect you, then we will see no need to keep coming around. At some point, you have to be that big, old, strong, lonely woman or you're going to have to back down and just be a lady. I wrote, turn up the heat. Negative men, like negative people in general, will try to pour water on your dreams. Some men are afraid of your success. They will focus on all of your faults to overshadow their own. Turn up the fire under your dreams so high that no one 
can pour enough water on them to put them out. And before Steve wrote, if you're telling your man you want a nose job and he, he sees nothing wrong with your nose, then maybe you ought to think about leaving your nose alone. Why run the risk of something going wrong when your man is already happy with the way you look? Why lose the extra weight if your man is happy with the way you are? I wrote, If you are overweight, losing weight is a wonderful idea for many reasons, including your health. When you embark on a weight loss program, however, do it because it is something that you want to do and not just to please the man in your life. If it makes him happy in the process, that's great. But he might think you need to lose 50 pounds and you would be happy with five. The most important thing is for you to be happy with yourself and to make changes based on factors that are important to you and how you want to look and feel. For some women, it is more important to walk, talk, look, dress, and think the way the man in their life wants them to rather than to please themselves. In the end, these women often become someone they hate in order to please someone they think they love. And regarding Steve's 90-day rule, he writes that a woman should give a man a 90-day probationary period before she gives him some benefits. I assume that means sex. He said he got the idea from working for Ford Motor Company because you had to wait 90 days before you got some benefits. My question is this. How can we as women let a Ford Motor Company analogy determine how long we should wait before we give up something that is tied to our very souls, something that when lost for the first time can never be found. In conclusion, I want to say that I am keenly aware that if most people have a choice of two books with the same title, and one is like mine, a little self-published paperback by an unknown author with a picture of a woman in a boxing ring on the cover and one has a nice dust jacket with a picture of a popular celebrity on it without knowing what is inside they are most likely to opt for the latter but in spite of this I am encouraged by the story of David and Goliath and I will continue to promote my book and the God inspired messages in it because it lifts up women and in the end it lifts up God. Thank you.